we reach the tenth line uh, where the author rahimahullah he says musalsalun qul ma ala wasfin ata mithlu ama wallahi anba'ni alfata kadhaka qad haddathani qa'ima aw ba'da an haddathani tabassama the author rahimahullah he's talking about a topic called musalsal ama issue uh, or uh, the point that he's talking about here is called musalsal uh, musalsal means linked so the word musalsal it means linked and the line of poetry is the t explanation is musalsalun qul ma ala wasfin ata means linked is the tradition it's the type which is that does not come with a story yeah uh, uh, sorry that is that uh, it is that which comes with a story and in it ama wallahi anba'ni alfata and in it the person says, by Allah, it was told to me Likewise, he told me as he was standing Or uh, after he had told me he was smiling So here, he's telling you that the hadith which is musalsal is the hadith where the narrators in the chain of narration from the beginning to the end all of them, they used they use the same um, same description in terms of speech. Or um, by all of them saying wallahi. Like from the first one. He says wallahi. For example, the Prophet says wallahi. The Sahabi then says wallahi. Then the Tabi'i says wallahi. And then Tabi'i Tabi'i. Everyone who tells the other person says it. Like the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal. The hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, which Imam Ahmad and Nasai, Abu Dawood, uh, Ibn Khuzayma, all narrated, which is authentic chain of narration. It's an authentic chain of narration that the messenger said, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. By Allah, I love you. So the messenger said, Ya Mu'adh, uh, inni la uhibbuk, I love you. Usika ya Mu'adh, la tada'anna fi dubri kulli salatin an taqula Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. The messenger said to Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, I love you. So every narrator will say to the one who he narrates it to, I love you. So your shaykh will say to you, I love you. And then he'll tell you the hadith. And then your teacher's teacher will say to him, I love you. So this is called linked in terms of speech. Also, in terms of the gesture that the person who was narrating it was in. So for example, the person who was narrating it to you was either standing up. And so when you're narrating it, you're also doing the same. You're also doing the same, you narrate it standing up. You see, also, um, it is that the person tells you and he's smiling. And so everybody will smile through the chain. This is called musalsal, it's called linked. Um, and Imam Ibn Salah in his book, Ulum al Hadith, he says, وَقَلَّمَا تَسْلَمُ الْمُسَلْسَلَاتِ مِنْ ضَعْفٍ أَعْنِي فِي وَصْفِ التَّسَلْسُلِ لَا فِي أَصْلِ الْمَتْنِ He said it's really little, it is really little that the hadith which is linked or that falls, that has these type of characteristics little is it that it's safe from falling into weakness it's very little that it will fall, fall into um, uh, sorry little does it get saved from falling into weakness little is it protected from not falling into weakness meaning a lot of the times the hadith which are musalsalat are weak and they are not authentic um, and that is reality. Ibn Salah's statement here is Haqiqat al-Amr. It is a tambihul latif. It's a very good way, way of pointing out. Then the author then, Rahimullah, says, Azizu marwi thnaini aw thalatha, mashuru marwi fawqa ma thalatha. The author says, uh, he goes into um, Aziz. Um, he goes into Aziz. Aziz, again, it's another subdivision of, or types of hadiths. It is Aziz. Aziz is a strengthened, Aziz would be a strengthened narration. Aziz will mar with Naini. It is a narration where huh, the narrators who relate it are by two or three. They are either by two or three. You see? So the two or three people narrating it. So two people narrate it from the Prophet or three people. Then two or three people narrate it from them or two and three. Until the ending of the chain of narration. It's two, 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 
or it's 3333, okay? Mashhur marwi fawqa And the next type is called mashhur. And mashhur is, mashhur is, it is the hadith that, so the, the first, the word mashhur means popular, famous. The word mashhur means something that is famous, it's popular. It is the tradition, it's the hadith which is what? Related by three or more. Three or more people narrated. Okay? <coughs> That's one view, three or more. But uh, Bayquni's statement is what? More than three. Because he says, Mashhuru marwi fawqa ma thalatha. Okay? Uh, and then we'll speak about that differences, inshallah ta'ala, when we come to Nukhbatu al fikr rahimahullah. And uh, uh, Dr. al Sheikh Abdul Sattar Abu Ghudda, he he corrects Al Imam Al Bayquni on this line of poetry, and he says, instead of that, he says, Azizu marwi thnaini ya bahatha, mashhuru marwi an thalatha. So, hadith which is a hadith which is Aziz is a hadith narrated by how many people? It is a hadith that's narrated by two people. Bayquni said, or three, okay, or three in all of the chain of narration. Fi jami'i tabaqat al sanad. If it happens that three people narrated it from the Prophet, but all of those three, only one person narrated it from them, then we won't say this hadith is a Aziz. Because what would be looked at is the minimum. Okay? An example of a hadith which is Aziz, it is that which has been mentioned by Ibn Hajar in his Nuzhatul Nadar. Ibn Hajar, the example for this type of category, categorized this type of uh, hadith at the Aziz, uh, example for it is that which Ibn Hajar mentions in his book, Nuzhatun Nadar. He, he gives the example of the hadith that two sahabis narrated from the Prophet. Anas ibn Malik and Abu Hurairah. So now a hadith is what? It's Aziz. So how many people narrated it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Anas ibn Malik, Abu Hurairah narrated it. Okay? But the hadith became what? The hadith became Aziz from whose side? The hadith became Aziz from the side of Anas ibn Malik. From Anas ibn Malik, two people narrated it from him. Qatada narrated it from him and Abdul Aziz narrated it from him. And Qatada, two people narrated it from him. Shu'ba narrated it from him and Sa'id. Shu'ba and Sa'id both narrated it from him. Um, Naam, Abdul Aziz Ismail ibn Ulayya narrated it from him, wa Abdul Warith. Um, so, Qatada, two, two people narrated it from him, Shu'ba and Sa'id. Abdul Aziz, two people narrated it from him, Ismail ibn Ulayya, and also Abdul Warith. And then after that, a lot of people narrated it. So that hadith is called what? It is hadith which is Aziz. And it's the hadith of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, where he said, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba. إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ وَالِدِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ uh, The hadith is connected in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. The, the other type that he's talking about is called a mashhur. Mashhur is that which three or more narrated. But Bayquni only says how many? More than three. And inshallah ta'ala we're going to speak about that in more details. As I said, in our book, um, in our book, Nuzhatul Nadar. An example for this hadith is who? It's the hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yaqbidhu al-ilma intiza'an yantazi'uhu min sudur min al-ibad. Walakin yaqbidhu al-ilma biqabdi al-ulama hatta idha lam yubqi aliman. Ittakhadha al-nasu ru'usan juhalan fasu'ilu fa'aftahu bighayri ilmin fadallu wa adallu. This hadith, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, Ah, uh, how many people narrated it from Abdullah bin Amr bin As and onwards? Fi jami'i tabaqat al sanad. It is three or more people. If you want to find the, uh, who they are, go to Fathul al Bari, the explanation of Sahih al Bukhari. Also, the hadith which is mashhur, a hadith which is mashhur, is of types. There are six types of mashhur. There's a mashhur between the ahli ahli al hadith khasa. A hadith which are famous and it's popular to the, had the people of hadith. This is called a hadith which is mashhur inda inda al muhaddithin. There are hadith which is well known and it's mashhur amongst the people of hadith and the ulama and the general mass. 
Okay? That's also called a hadith which is mashhur. But this mashhur is not the terminology of the muhaditheen. It's not that type of terminologies, okay? So the one that's famous for the scholar of hadith, they use it a lot. The second type is, it is famous amongst the people of hadith and it's amongst the scholars and amongst the general mass. The third type is, it's very well known amongst the fuqaha. The fuqaha use this a lot and it's very common amongst them, okay? Number four is a hadith which is very well taken on board and it's famous amongst the usuliyin. The usuliyin, they rely on it a lot and they, you always find it in their books, they use that. There's also a mashhur which is bayn al-nuhat amongst the grammarians which is the fifth one. And last but not least, a hadith which is very well known amongst the general mass. Mashhurun bayn al amma So those three, six types are also known as they are mashhur but this type of mashhur is just famous and it's popular, okay? But the mashhur that we're talking about here in the scholars of hadith, when they say this hadith is mashhur, it means ma rawahu thalatha turwatin fa'akthar fi kulli tabaqatin min tabaqatis sanat ma lam yablu, ma lam yablu hatta tawatur. Number 13, the author, rahimahullah, then says, mu'an'anun ka'an sa'idin an karam wa mubhamun ma fi hirawin lam yusam. The author now talking about um, the hadith which is Mu'an'an and we'll speak about that inshallah ta'ala um, <coughs> Abdul Sahak, Dr. Abdul Haq, uh, Dr. Abdul Sitar uh, Abu Gudda, he corrects him over here and he says Mu'an'anun Mu'an'anun mudallisina an karam wa mubhamun ma fihira wa lam yusam that the same ruling of the Mu'an'an is the Mu'an'an okay Mu'an'an sorry the, sorry, the Mu'an'an and the Mu'an'an are both, they take the same ruling, okay? What does it mean, the hadith, which, which is, or first of all, what does that line of poetry mean? Mu'an'anun ka'an sa'idin an karam wa mubhamun ma fihi rawin lam yusam. What does that mean? Mu'an'anun means, it is, a uh, Mu'an'anun is ka'an sa'idin an karam. Mu'an'an is like, so he's explaining it to you in the line of poetry. Mu'an'an is like ka, the kafia is like ka, like an sa'idin, like sa'id, like from sa'id, an karam, like from karam. That's what mu'an an means. It's when a narrator says an fulan, an fulan, an. So when the person who's narrating it from another individual, he narrates it from him by using the word what? An. He uses that word, it's called mu'an an. It's called what? Mu'an an. Because it's an, 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 an. So there are ways to narrate from one another. An is one of the ways to narrate from one another. Haddathana is one of the ways to narrate from one another. Akhbarana is one of the ways to narrate from one another. Anba'ana is one of the ways to narrate from one another. So the type where people narrate from one another by using an is like, it has a, it has a, a meaning to the scholars of hadith, meaning they have an understanding of it. The hadith which is narrated with an, it is where the narrator says an fulan, an fulan, an fulan, an fulan. Okay? This ha type of hadith, which the an is used, it's not accepted from everybody. That's why it's always spoken about. Are you with me? If a narrator says an, he's, it's not always accepted from him. It's sometimes rejected from him. If he uses the word an. Because the word an means what? The word an means... Huh? The word an means um, from. Okay, it means what? It means from. And when you say from, there's a possibility you, could, you, might, you might not have heard it from the person directly. But because there's that possibility that you didn't hear it from the person directly, and there could have been somebody else in between you, or there could be people between you and them, you and the person you're narrating it from, the scholars of hadith want you to tell us, with a clear usage of the word of akhbarani, he told me, anba'ani, ahaddathani. Those words are explicit in saying that I heard it from him, he told me, I took it from his mouth, it's explicit. Where the word an, an is not explicit, okay? So when the word an is used, the scholars of hadith, they look at the person who uses it. If he's known to drop people out of the narration when he narrates it, Okay, if he is known to 
to drop people out of the narration, if he's known to do that, then his usage of the word an is not taken from him. So they would say, for example, this person is a mudallis. Mudallis is the one who, what does he do? He says from. The reason why he would use an is to try to get rid of a couple of people. Why would he do that? He would do that so he can get shorter and closer to the Prophet. Okay, and many other reasons. He might, he have might. But he's not lying, is he? Because if I say, for instance, that I heard from, for example, uh, so we have two people here, inshallah ta'ala, we have Ahmed and Muhammad. And I heard it from Muhammad, I never heard it from Muhammad, I heard it from Ahmed. But Ahmed is a weak person. Instead of me saying I heard it from Ahmed, I will just say from Muhammad. Now initially I didn't lie. Have I lied? I haven't lied. I've told that? I've told the truth. So you can't say I've lied. But what I have also done is I've got rid of somebody. Now scholars of hadith want to know who this individual is. So if I'm known to do that, I mean I get rid of people. I am now called a mudallis. And my usage of the word an is not accepted. It's not taken from me. It will be like this person is a mudallis. He used the word an unless he uses an explicit, a clear cut usage of the word either haddathana, akbarana, and ba'na. Does that make sense? His narration is not accepted. Good. That is called what? That is called an ana. And it's very important. Good. <clears throat> then the author in the second in the second part of the poetry, what does he say? وَمُبْهَمٌ مَا فِيهِ رَاوِي لَمْ يُسَمْ وَمُبْهَمٌ And Mubham is what? Mubham is the obscure. Mubham means what? Something that's obscure. It's ambiguous. It is وَمُبْهَمٌ The obscure narration is what? It contains in it, it contains a person who has not been named. There's a person in there who's not known. And that's the one where the scholars of hadith say a man came to the Prophet. Or a man said to, said to the Prophet. Now that man is obscure. Who is this man? Okay. That's called what? That's called mubham. And that's the type of mubham that falls in the narration itself. That's called mubhamul matn. A man, it's, that is part of the narration. Okay. Now, for us to not know who this man is who asked the Prophet the question isn't important to us. We don't really need to know. Because the one who's narrating it is reliable, who was there and he's narrating it to us. We don't have to necessarily know exactly who this person who asked the question is. Okay? But what we do need to know is if that falls into the chain of narration. If the Ibham, if the, if the obscure individual is in the narration, if it's, if it's in the chain of narration, this is called Mubhamul Isnad. So for example, somebody would say, a man told me, we would say, who's this man? That's Mubham. That is what? It's Mubham. That person is Mubham. <coughs> Good. Like for example, if you use the hadith of the hadith of Rafi' ibn Khadij. Okay, Rafi ibn Khadij, he said, Hadith of Rafi ibn Khadij and Ammihi from his uncle. Now, here, who is his uncle? Who is the name of who's, who's uncle? Now, scholars of Hadith will take time out and they will try to look for that person. Now, Alhamdulillah, the uncle of Rafi ibn Khadij is known that he's, he's, who his uncle is, that his name is Zahir ibn Rafi. He's known. He's what? He's known. But if it wasn't known, if it wasn't known, then that narration would be considered weak. You can't just say a man told me or a woman told me. The question is, is who, this, who is this person? Okay? That is called what? Mubham. وَكُلُّ مَا قَلَّتْ رِجَالُهُ عَلَىٰ وَضِدُّهُ ذَاكَ الَّذِي قَدْ نَزَلَىٰ the author here, Rahimullah, he's talking about what we will call Ali al Isnad and Nazil al Isnad. Ali al Isnad and Nazil al Isnad. He said, Wakullu ma qallat rijaluhu ala. He said, Every narration whose who the narrators who are in it, Wakullu ma qallat. Those narrations whose men are few, 
ها قلت رجاله على اتكون عالي if the, if the narrator from him and the messenger there is a little number this hadith is called عالي الإسناد because your sh- the narration is very short and the scholars of hadith would do so much to try to what? try to have the shortest chain of narration to the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام um, Al-Imam Safarini rahimahu Allah what did, he, what did he do? He has a book in which he basically brought out the thulathiyat of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Imam Ahmad had three narrations between him and the messenger. So you find narrators like that working hard to making sure that they got thulathiyat. You know, some of them hard, even rubai'i. They'll go hard and try their best to have the shortest chain of narration. This is called what? Ali al-Isnad. The opposite to it is what? Wadidduhu, the opposite. Wadidduhu, the opposite. Zakal ladhi qannazala is the hadith where the chain is long. Where the chain is a bit long. So the person who's narrating from the Messenger has a, a longer chain. Now, how does that occur? The details of it, inshallah ta'ala, I've explained it more in details in our Kitab Nukhbatu Al Fikr. Inshallah ta'ala, which you all will be able to uh, listen to, inshallah ta'ala. <coughs> so, this head place the Sheikh is talking about hadith which is Ali al Isnad and a type which is called Nazil al Isnad. Where the chain is short and the chain is what? It's long. The Ali al Isnad um, is who is the one 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 the chain of narration is small. And then the way we compare it, I don't want to go to more details. Inshallah ta'ala, Nukhbat al Fikr, Rahimahullah, Ali Mabu ibn Hajar, in his Nukhbat al Fikr. He has made it more detailed there. And the opposite is called Nazil, Nazil al-Isnad. وَمَا أَضَفْتَهُ إِلَى الْأَصْحَابِ مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَفِعْلٍ فَهُوَ مَوْقُوفٌ زُكٍ The Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he already told us two types and now he's going to the third type. What is the two types that he said and what is the third type here? The two types that he told us before was anything that is attributed to the messenger is called what? Marfu, very good. So anything that's attributed to the messenger is called what? Marfu. And he also told us previously, anything that's attributed to a tabi'i is called what? Maqtu. If something is attributed to tabi'i, it's called maqtu. Now he's speaking about if something is attributed to a companion. If something is attributed to a companion, what is that called? So if Sahabi he said something, or if a Sahabi did something, what is that called? It's called mawquf. You have to learn that word, mawquf. Mawquf means anything that's attributed to a companion, a, a statement that's attributed to a companion. For example, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, حَدِّثُ النَّاسَ بِمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَتُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُكَذَّبَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Tell the people what they can comprehend. Tell the people, inform the people that which they are able to comprehend and understand. Do you want the people to disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger? Um, also an sp- action. Also a, an action that's attributed to a companion. Okay? For example, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, done, done this. Or Abdullah ibn Umar did this. Or, for example, Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, he grabbed his bed and anything that was um, extra to that, he took it from it. He took from it anything that was additional to the hand fist of his. Now this is an action that's been attributed to a companion. Okay? It's an action. So it's called mawquf fi'li. Okay? That's called... Um, so, وَمَا أَضَفْتَهُ Anything you attribute إِلَى الْأَصْحَابِ to the companions مِنْ قَوْلٍ in terms of speech وَفِعْلٍ in terms of action فَهُوَ مَوْقُوفٌ That's called what? That is called mawquf. Zukin means suspended. It's suspended there. Um, also, um, there's a type that he didn't mention, which can also be thrown there is mawquf taqriri. If a tabi'i, a tabi'i does something in front of a companion, and the companion just watches him do it, it's also mawquf. Ah. So, for example, if he said, فَعَلْتُ كَذَا بِحَضْرَةِ الصَّحَابِيُّ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنَ عَبَّاسُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنَ عُمَرُ عُمَرُ بْنُ خَطَّابُ I did this in his presence. 
ولم يمكن علي أن he didn't reject what I did or he didn't speak against it. Then that's also called موقوف تقريري. It's as though that the companion consented to it and agreed to it. نعم. Um, that's important. <coughs> we have to realize something which if a Sahabi says sometimes that, um, but he doesn't attribute it to a prophet. So if a Sahabi says something, we said it's called what? It's called موقوف. If a Sahabi says something, uh, a statement is attributed to a Sahabi, it becomes what? موقوف. So if we say this, Abdullah ibn Abbas said this, this is called what? موقوف. But if this statement that is being attributed, attributed tid, to Abdullah ibn Abbas is a statement that he could have not got, Abdullah ibn Abbas could not have got this from his own striving. Meaning, we would say, لا مجال للرأي أما لا مجال للاجتهاد This statement of his has no place for striving. For example, he talks about the unseen. He talks about the grave. Now, what we'd say is, موقوفوا لفظا The wording is, is موقوف to Abdullah ibn Abbas. Because we attributed it to him and he didn't uplift it to the Prophet. So the wording will say is موقوف. When Abdullah ibn Abbas said this. But the ruling it takes is that as though the Prophet said it. So we say موقوفوا لفظا مرفوع حكما. It takes the ruling of a marfu. Because Abdullah ibn Abbas could not have got this from what? His own striving. But there's exceptions. Not every Sahabi is like that. Whether if Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As says something, if Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he says something, and what he said is from the unseen, it doesn't take marfu. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, it doesn't take marfu. The reason why is because he was his known, huh? what he did on the day of Khaybar. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, the day of Khaybar, he took two zawiyah, two uh, baskets full of what? The scrolls of the Jews and, uh, and the Christians. And he read it. So sometimes he used to quote it from there. He used to quote it from there, so he's got a different ruling. Naam. Very good. If a Sahabi, for example, says, Mina sunnati kada, this is from the sunnah. This is from the sunnah. Ah? Uh, if he says this is from the sunnah, this is from the sunnah. The scholars they say this is called mawqufu lafdan marfu hukman. The ruling is what? The ruling is what? We are uplifted to the Prophet. If a companion says this is from the sunnah, that statement if he says it, mina sunnah kada wa kada, from the sunnah is this, 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 this. Uh, we'll say that even though the Sahabi didn't uplift it or attribute it to the Prophet, and it, he, it, he just said it from his own self, we will say that this cannot come from his own striving. How does he know what's sunnah or not? So the scholars, they give this the ruling of a, a rafa. They give it the ruling as though the Prophet ﷺ said it.